development of systems for medical imaging using techniques derived from nuclear physics. She has directed numerous research projects, including the Einstein project funded by the Italian Ministry of University and Research, INFN, and the National Center for Hadron Therapy Oncology, that is CNAO. Inside is an imaging system for the in vivo verification of hadron therapy treatments, and it's currently in a clinical trial at the CNAO Center. And so uh, let me give the floor to Juicy who can start to share the screen, I think, yes. if uh, the previous uh, presentation is uh, discarded. Ju Julio has to stop sharing. Uh, thank you very much, Monica. And I it's think now I can... Oh, yeah, okay, great. great. Good morning, good morning, Manjit. Good morning, Good morning, everybody. Josie. Thank you. Nice to have you here. I, I, I try to share my screen. Presentation mode, and we are ready to start. Are you able to see? Can you hear me? Perfectly, yes. perfectly. So thank you again for your kind presentation and thank you to the organizer for the invitation. I'm very happy to be here. Uh, also, of, of course, uh, not in, in, uh, in present. Um, the topic of my call is uh, imaging in particle therapy, which is uh, a vast subject uh, that is uh, uh, that they have no time to, uh, to cover in this presentation. I'll give you here an outline of my talk. Uh, I will give you a brief introduction on image-guided particle therapy. And then uh, the, 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 the heart of my talk will be the imaging methods, second advantages of uh, nuclear interactions in, uh, in the, the tissue. And then if we had time, I spent a few words on proton computer tomography, and then I will uh, come to the conclusions. In this slide, uh, um, there is a, um, a simple representation of the particle therapy clinical workflow, where the patient has the first a consultation with a physician that uh, provide the diagnosis and uh, um, information to, uh, to prescribe the dose and to plan the actual treatment of the patient that is uh, uh, delivered in a uh, uh, few days or a few weeks. Uh, possibly uh, the plan can be uh, re, um, rescheduled, uh, re recalculated if something is uh, changed during the, uh, the treatment uh, course. And then uh, um, at the end of the treatment, there is a follow-up uh, uh, to assess the outcome uh, of, uh, of the treatment. In all these phases uh, of the treatment, the, uh, the imaging is, plays an important, uh, fundamental role. In the pre-treatment phase, uh, uh, there is an anatomical and uh, functional passion representation that is very important for the uh, organ delineation and target delineation, and also for uh, constituted the input for those calculation and, and, and so for the treatment plan. This uh, uh, patient representation is done uh, by means of a standard technique. Um, the, the most important is the computer tomography that can be uh, carried out in a single energy CT means that there is a, a one single energy spectrum that is used for x-rays uh, uh, produced by uh, an x-ray uh, tube uh, installed in the uh, CT system, or in a more advanced way in dual energy CT, where two uh, different energy spectra, uh, a low energy and a higher energy, means that low energies is of 80 kV, uh, kilowatt peak energy and 150 kilowatt peak energy that are used in order to um, calculate the important quantities uh, uh, for the calculation of the treatment plan. Other uh, imaging modalities that are used are magnetic resonant imaging called MRI or functional imaging system like single photon emission computed tomography or SPECT or positron emission tomography or PET. I think that uh, you uh, know very well uh, the functioning of this system, so I 
um, <clears throat> go fast on this uh, on this part and then move on on the um, imaging uh, um, performed during the treatment or uh, uh, before the treatment. This, uh, um, this, is, this imaging modality is called image guided radiotherapy, IGRT. And it is, it is the project, uh, uh, the process of frequent imaging, um, both in uh, two dimensional or three dimensional, uh, the image in the patient in the treatment room during the course of radiotherapy to, uh, in order to guide uh, the treatment process. The, the, treatment process. Uh, the patient is imaged uh, uh, for uh, daily setup and is used for uh, triggering of uh, adaptation uh, or input for those uh, uh, calculation and uh, uh, range monitoring. So uh, the technique that are used uh, to perform uh, image-guided particle therapy are um, X-rays, as we've seen in a moment, uh, mostly combined CT, and in the future, uh, MRI-guided uh, particle therapy. I will uh, um, cover this topic, uh, this topic quite briefly, and I move on the next uh, topic, which is the imaging actually during the treatment that is performed um, by using, uh, uh, for instance, PET, positron emission tomography in an in beam configuration, prompt gamma imaging, and uh, uh, charge fraction fragment emission imaging. Last uh, modality that is uh, uh, performed uh, in, uh, immediately before the treatment is the proton CT or proton radiography that uh, I will present at the end of my, of my talk. Uh, sorry. Imaging is also uh, used in the post-treatment phase in order to assess the tumor response, the radiation toxicity, and also to model uh, those effects uh, uh, related to the, to the treatment. Um, the modality are the standard modality, MRI and CT, so I do not uh, uh, spend um, mm. more time on this and I focalize on the, the um, in-treatment part of, uh, um, of, my, of the presentation. So being a, a very precise technique, as, I, as you have seen in, uh, uh, in the previous uh, presentation, um, uh, being a, uh, so precise a technique, particle therapy is uh, uh, highly sensitive uh, uh, to range uncertainty. This is a drawback of, uh, uh, of this uh, uh, radiotherapy modality. That means that, that we have a variation of uh, the range of the particles with respect to what we plan. Uh, we can have uh, uh, overdosage of healthy tissue in front of uh, the uh, target region, or uh, most importantly, under dosage of the tumor hmm, in this part of uh, uh, at the end of, uh, of the range of the particle. So in order to um, uh, be able to take into account uh, this range uncertainties, uh, general safety, uh, safety margins are applied uh, to the, uh, to the uh, treatment plan in order to uh, compensate, to mitigate for, uh, this, uh, for these errors. And the safety margins are quite large because uh, uh, they are calculated between 2.5 and 3% of uh, uh, the range, plus an additional uh, uh, contribution that can be extended to one to three millimeters. And which, is, uh, which are the sources of uncertainties in particle therapy? They can be uh, patient-related, and they can be due to daily positioning of the patient on the, on the couch, can be due to internal organ motion or changes in, in the uh, anatomy of the, of the patients or changes in the air cavities or related to uh, regression of uh, the tumor, and also by uh, due to weight loss of, uh, of the patient. They can also be all physics related 
and uh, uh, depends on uh, the calibration way of the uh, CT uh, that you use to calculate uh, the proton stopping power that you use to calculate the, uh, the treatment plan. And so these are um, uncertainty related to the dose calculation. Other source that can be, uh, uh, that can be uh, uh, seen are uh, RB, uh, RB values uncertainties or tumor heterogeneities and contouring and also machine related uh, uh, uncertainties. Um, in this uh, uh, scenario, imaging plays an important role, uh, especially to control and to mitigate patient-related uh, uncertainties. And also, we can see we, we will see uh, at the end of, the, of my talk how to uh, mitigate also the physics-related uh, uncertainties. Um, Concerning to the standard way to, uh, to perform image-guided radiotherapy, uh, in the past, the standard in, uh, in particle therapy was to use two orthogonal uh, kilovolt images obtained by radiating two uh, panels, two flat panels, detectors. And they, are, they were used to uh, perform daily alignment and correction uh, with no other action uh, required. Um, this system is, uh, allows very accurate bone-based positioning, and it is adequate for many uh, classical indications in particle therapy, but uh, um, um, may require large margins uh, for compensation if uh, inter or intrafractional motion of the organs is, uh, is an important issue in, uh, in the therapy. So uh, the most advanced, the, the, the more advanced system that has been installed starting from 2014 at UPenn was a gantry mounted Combin CT, which is uh, represented here. And now, uh, the standard in most uh, uh, particle therapy facility is the decombined CT uh, installed uh, directly in the nozzle in the nozzle of uh, uh, the um, the system, the therapeutic system. Here is the uh, combined CT X-ray tube that uh, produces the X-ray beam that passes to the patient, and here is the flat panel detector that collects uh, the imaging in the uh, different projection of uh, the uh, acquisition. This system uh, is quite good for bone-based positioning. Um, and uh, it can be used also to trigger, uh, to cut the trigger of rescanning and replanning of, uh, uh, of the plan if uh, variation in uh, the anatomy of the patient is, uh, is found. Um, Convincity is uh, um, an imaging technique that is not uh, uh, very adequate to, to, to image soft tissue. So more difficult is to use this system for repositioning based on uh, uh, soft tissue variation. And uh, um, in this slide, um, I'm... Mm, um, provide you an example of uh, how convincity can be used uh, to um, um, to help to replane uh, to replan a treatment when convincity uh, detect a change in the anatomy of the patient during the treatment, and this can be done comparing uh, the uh, planet CT that is acquired before the treatment with the convincity acquired uh, immediately before the treatment. And you can see here the image quality is not uh, as good as the PCT, the, the planet CT. And uh, uh, it requires uh, um, an algorithm that uh, uh, treat the image in order to uh, obtain a virtual CT test to reproduce the feature of uh, uh, the original planet CT. This uh, virtual CT is compared to the planet CT in order to see that there are 
differences uh, in the actual uh, uh, anat anat anatomical feature of the patient and, uh, uh, and the, uh, the one detected during the planning phase. And uh, here you can see what can be uh, done with this uh, technique and to calculate the so-called dose of the day means the dose that can be uh, replanted if something uh, is changed with respect to uh, the planet dose. You can see here uh, the isodose curves uh, obtained during the planning phase. And here you can see that uh, by means of the virtual CT obtaining the procedures that I uh, shown before, um, the, uh, iso the isodose curves obtained uh, for the water dose means the dose that is uh, modified because the patient was modified for, uh, uh, for some reason. And then uh, uh, virtual CTs is used to recalculate uh, and optimize the dose to, uh, to be, to be uh, delivered to the patient. So this is a, a laborious uh, uh, procedure that uh, do not always work, and uh, it is very difficult to implement in the workflow. So an alternative uh, uh, that was uh, uh, one of the first solution actually for uh, in uh, image guided radiation therapy was uh, uh, the CT, uh, the so-called CT on rail, where. Uh, the bed of the patient is mounted on, on a robotic system and moved from the uh, actual uh, uh, treatment uh, uh, system to uh, a CT system, a CT system of high quality, not combined CT, which is low resolution, but a quality, high quality CT that is mounted on this rail that can be position at the so-called imaging isocenter position. This system, this setup, allows for better contrast resolution, especially for soft tissues. Um, and also it can be uh, performed in a, uh, in a very fast way. It shows a larger axial and longitudinal field of view than a convincity installed in a uh, in, a, in a gantry, and also it's more accurate uh, the, uh, for the calculation of uh, uh, the important parameter, which, which are the city number, uh, for the replaning of, uh, again, a possible replaning of uh, uh, the treatment. It is also you, it can, can also be used for the so-called for the CT scan for moving tumors. That means that uh, the scan can be uh, used also uh, uh, take into account not only the spatial information, but also the time information in order to track uh, moving tumor, means moving targets that are, uh, are difficult tasks to, uh, to address. Um, the future and uh, the competition uh, actually with the, the system based on X-rays that I've shown before is represented by the so-called MR-guided particle therapy, MRGPT, which is uh, um, an, MR, an, MR, an MR system, an MR imaging system um, built uh, around the patient in a, in a way that the beam, the treating beam, is uh, um, um, passed through a, um, a region where a, a magnetic field is, uh, is present. And this uh, particular geometry of split bore magnet MRI allows to accommodate the, the beam and the treatment and perform MR imaging during the treatment. This is an important uh, research that is performed in several research centers. Uh, there is no, uh, is no um, uh, clinical application, but uh, the research efforts are, uh, are many. You can, uh, uh, you can find here a paper uh, where I uh, found this uh, representation of a possible setup, but there are others. And the advantage of this, uh, uh, of this proposed technique is that it provides uh, a detailed anatomical information 
because MRI, which is sensitive to, uh, um, of course, the um, presence of, uh, of uh, water in the tissues or soft tissues is uh, provided a better resolution to uh, soft tissue with respect to CT, which is more sensitive to uh, higher density, higher electronic density tissues. And also no ionizing radiation is used uh, uh, to perform this, uh, this uh, uh, imaging modality, which is quite important, for instance, for pediatric application. There are many issues that have to be addressed uh, because this is a new and complicated technique. Uh, there are electromagnetic uh, strong interactions between the MRI system, uh, which accommodate for a magnet from 0.5 to 1.5 to 3 Tesla and uh, the beam, the, the particle beam, that can, uh, that can trigger mutual interference between, between the two systems. Another important issue to be addressed is also how to integrate uh, uh, and how to manage uh, uh, clinical workflow in this, uh, uh, in this new modality. How, for instance, you um, take the information of the uh, real-time uh, MRI that you get during the, uh, during the treatment, and then how can you use the, uh, the MRI information in order to recalculate the plan for uh, the adaptive radiotherapy, for instance. And uh, um, another important issue is how to uh, calculate the proton dose and how to uh, update the algorithm, the algorithm for proton dose calculation in presence of magnetic fields. So we, uh, we saw the impact of uh, uncertainties uh, in, uh, in different ways. Uh, in this slide, I'll show you a um, patient that uh, has been uh, uh, planned and then after three weeks of treatment uh, has been uh, uh, replanned because there was, there was a variation in the anatomy and the acid of course were uh, profoundly changed with respect to what uh, was planned in, uh, in the planning stage of, um, actually. So it is very important that, uh, Together with the imaging technique that we uh, that we see uh, that, that we have seen before, also to have uh, uh, tools for in vivo range verification means that uh, uh, in vivo verification and monitoring of uh, the range of the particles that are actually delivered to the patient. This offers the possibility to check the accuracy of uh, the beam. Uh, delivery during uh, the uh, dose uh, um, delivery. And this can be done in uh, several ways. Uh, I concentrate in, uh, in the use and exploitation of the nuclear interaction of the uh, particle beams in, uh, uh, in the tissue. The idea of exploiting the nuclear interaction and nuclear products is not new, is uh, quite uh, old. Uh, you can see here, the, one of the first papers uh, uh, is uh, 1982, but also before this, uh, this, this date. And uh, in this paper, it is proposed the use of radioactive beams, radioactive beams meaning, meaning positron emitters beam, produce as a secondary particles from uh, every particle accelerator. In this example, uh, there is uh, um, the, um, the bra peak actually um, the relative to uh, a beam of uh, neon 19, which is uh, a positron uh, emitter, obtained by nuclear fragmentation of neon 20 beams on beryllium target and then uh, um, imaged with uh, a system of uh, sodium iodine. Uh, uh, detectors with other photomultiplier tubes. This acquisition has been performed uh, at uh, LBL and was the first demonstration that it's possible to uh, use uh, uh, radioactive beams to, uh, to track the, uh, the range of the particle. And the, uh, the abstract of the, of the paper concludes by saying that this technique can be used in the future 
to uh, monitor and verify the quality of, uh, of the trick. And this has been uh, uh, actually done in the, in the future and in the present. Uh, uh, so uh, in this slide, uh, uh, I will uh, uh, I, I will present the main uh, uh, interaction that are occurring between the particle beam and uh, and uh, the target and the tissues. Uh, this is only a sketch, but to show you uh, that, for instance, uh, when the uh, projectile is a pro uh, is a proton, there is a, a reaction of uh, the projectile with the target nuclei that produce fast neutrons and in the final stage, a state a residual target nuclei and uh, gamma proton. For carbon therapy, uh, these techniques are also used in, uh, in uh, ion therapy, actually. Um, the, reaction, the reactions are nucleus-nucleus reaction described by the abrasion-ablation uh, model. And the, uh, during the reaction and after the reaction in the final state, you can have uh, uh, a residual projectile that is moving uh, in the forward direction and also a residual target uh, nuclei that uh, uh, produce different, uh, different uh, uh, nuclei and uh, gamma drops. Um, this is a simulation of uh, what is occurring in water um, irradiated with a beam of uh, carbon-12, 330 MeV per nucleon. Uh, and you can see here that uh, uh, the uh, dose, the position in water, is uh, uh, subdivided in, in a several contribution uh, due to the fragmentation both of the target, uh, the target nuclei, and both on the uh, um, projectile itself. The consequences of the fragmentation are um, in, the, in the bad side and uh, loss of beam uh, influence, uh, quite, uh, quite uh, important losses in influence, but also in the modification of the dose distribution, especially in the build-up region and also for carbon, uh, for carbon projectiles also beyond the red peak. You can see here uh, um, an important fragment, uh, fragmentation tail uh, after the red peak. On the uh, advantages of uh, uh, the fragmentation reaction of the nuclear reaction, there are uh, the production, as, as we have seen before, of different types of secondary particles that can be exploited uh, to, to do imaging. Uh, you can see here uh, the production of uh, beta plus emitting isotopes, also prompt gamma, neutrons, uh, and uh, uh, for, uh, for instance, uh, a fragmentation of uh, uh, carbon-12 nuclei, also production of charged fragment moving faster outside uh, the, uh, the passion. Let's start with the uh, um, production of uh, beta plus emitters because it was the first uh, uh, technique that was uh, exploited uh, in the past, in the present, and it was the first that had been uh, uh, experimented in, in, uh, in a clinical setting. And uh, uh, you can see here the uh, two of the principal reactions that are occurring with uh, oxygen and with carbon uh, with the proton beam where are produced uh, uh, oxygen uh, 15 and carbon 11, which are beta plus emitter, uh, decaying in a uh, uh, relative short time, uh, two minutes for the, for the oxygen 15 and 20 minutes for the carbon 11. There are others uh, emitters produced, but uh, they are uh, less abundant of, uh, of this one. After the, the production of uh, the beta plus emitters uh, in the body, um, the positron uh, travels in the, in the tissues for a few millimeters and then annihilate uh, uh, mostly at rest with an electron of the tissue and producing two antilinear uh, 511 kV photons that can be um, detected by a scanner, a PET scanner, uh, around the patient uh, and by the coincidence acquisition, the time coincidence acquisition of different uh, line of uh, response or line of flight 
we can uh, reconstruct the um, distribution of the induced activity in depression. This can be done without uh, additional dose to depression. This is very important. And you can see here a profile simulated in a PMMR phantom of uh, um, a proton beam of 110 MeV uh, in, in PMMA compare the activity profile in a solid line compared to the dose profile uh, for, uh, for the uh, carbon beam uh, still in PMMA. You can see here the activity profile and the uh, dose profile. You can see here that for the um, um, proton beam, the activity is as a shape quite different from the dose shape, uh, the depth dose shape. And also the, the distal part of the, of the activity profile is a few millimeters uh, uh, before the, it's, it's located a few millimeters before the graph peak. And this is a, a quite important point because this technique cannot be applied to um, directly uh, calculate the dose from the activity, but, but not to correlate the position of the Brad peak, the Brad peak to uh, the activity uh, follow position. Uh, for the uh, acquisition with carbon, uh, with for the treatment with carbon ions, the situation is, uh, is better because the, the peak that you can see in the activity that is produced from the fragmentation of the projectile is uh, more close to the, uh, to the, um, to the dose, uh, to the dose profile. And so the correlation between the activity and the dose is, uh, is much better than in the, in the proton curve. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the uh, activity produced during the carbon, uh, the carbon therapy is, uh, is very low and uh, the, the technique has been uh, uh, mainly applied to proton therapy. So it, here is a, a slide that is uh, uh, summarize uh, the situation in the past and the present of uh, the PET monitoring in particle therapy. You, have, uh, you can, uh, you can uh, read uh, uh, many papers uh, uh, starting from uh, the work of, Eng of Engart et al. in uh, GSI in the 90s uh, and uh, other, um, many other um, papers uh, from uh, Parodi et al. Where this technique has been implemented in several configurations uh, in, um, in a modality that is called offline PET, where the dose is delivered in, a, in the, the treatment room and then the PET uh, is acquired in a different location in another room that, where the patient is, uh, is moved after the treatment, with the advantage that we can use a commercial scanner uh, with a a lot of advantages with respect to the image quality. But in, the, in this case, we pay for um, patient uh, repositioning. Uh, so there is an uncertainty also in the repositioning of the patient uh, from the, the delivery to the acquisition room. Uh, data loss for the more sh uh, the shorter living isotopes like uh, oxygen 15, and also physiological washout of the perfused uh, tissues that uh, where the activity is formed that are washed away um, after, the, sorry, after the treatment. So the most advanced uh, uh, implementation of uh, uh, monitoring with PET is the online PET, where the dose is delivered and then the PET is acquired or in the same room here, uh, with a uh, modified uh, uh, commercial scanner. And this has been uh, mostly performed in uh, uh, Massachusetts, General, Massachusetts General Hospital particle therapy, proton therapy facility, but also um, uh, in beam PET installation where uh, data were acquired be born, means during the uh, delivery of the treatment. So uh, the patient is uh, treated and then uh, Concurrent telepath is uh, the PET signal is, uh, is acquired. We can see that we uh, have uh, a lot of advantages in terms of uh, uh, positioning and uh, statistics on the short living isotopes. 
but uh, uh, as we can see in a moment, we, uh, we pay for image artifact due to the incomplete coverage of uh, the geometry of, uh, uh, of the field of view, and also um, issues of statistics, uh, especially for carbon ions uh, um, projectiles. Um, so the main problem in impact is the difficulty to integrate uh, to integrate these systems uh, in the uh, in the gantry of, uh, um, of the of the treatment room, um, and so the solutions are um, essentially two approaches: a uh, two planes uh, path that is uh, represented schematically here. Uh, the two paths uh, is a geometry that the two head the paths is a common geometry in this configuration because it allows the proton beam to uh, to pass through the, the patient and uh, without being uh, uh, hampered by the presence of the scanner. And uh, uh, other geometries, more particular, are, uh, for instance, uh, the geometry exploited by the open path system de developed at uh, NIRS in Japan, where they use as a slanted uh, uh, cylinder geometry to allow us both uh, for treatment and uh, path acquisition. And you can see here a picture of uh, uh, the uh, open path in the final configuration uh, with the slanted cylinder geometry. And also you can see here the acquisition uh, um, performed with this system at the HIMAC in Japan with carbon ion uh, beams. Uh, and you can see here that the reconstruction of the activity uh, collected with the PET system uh, uh, reproduced quite, uh, quite well the, uh, the bracket peak of, uh, of the beam. Um, moving to the uh, two-panel uh, geometry, uh, I will present here the inside, uh, the inside system that is composed of uh, an in-beam pet system. Here are the two pet heads. Here is the beam, and uh, the picture is taken in the uh, in one, one of the treatment room of uh, CNAO, uh, National Adrenal Therapy Center in Italy, in Pavia. This system is particular because uh, it uh, coupled uh, uh, in in beam pet system with a uh, uh, dose profile that we'll see in a moment that is a uh, tracker for uh, charge of particle. Um, the in-beam PET system is composed by uh, several modules of uh, scintillators, ten, actually 10 plus 10 modules of uh, uh, lutetium-based scintillators coupled with the readout by silicon photon multipliers. You can see here a picture of the, of the detector that is uh, uh, the heart of our system. And uh, uh, these are the performance of uh, the system in terms of uh, coincidence resolution and energy resolution. Uh, how it works, uh, the system is able to operate during the delivery of the system, the, of the beam, and you, we can collect in real time the uh, reconstruct the number, the coincidence uh, that, it, that are related to the um, annihilation of uh, the uh, positrons in the, in the tissue. So you can see here that uh, uh, during the, during the uh, delivery of the treatment, uh, the uh, isotope, the theta plus emitters accumulate, and then after the, the end of the treatment, there is a decay of uh, the uh, isotopes. During the treatment, there are a lot of uh, um, coincidences that are not related to the beta plus emitters, not only related to the beta plus emitters annihilation, but also to uh, noise that is due to uh, prompt uh, radiation uh, uh, produced during the actual uh, delivery of, uh, of the beam, especially in a um, Structure, beam structure and time structure of the beam, like the one uh, produced by the synchrotronic now, which is uh, um, 
divided in a spill beam-on uh, phase, where the, the beam is actually extracted and uh, sent to the patient of the length, the time length of one second, and an interspill inter -spill phase of three seconds, where the beam is actually uh, off for recirculation and uh, next acceleration. So our system is able to acquire in both yes. phases. Uh, Josie, sorry for interrupting. Just to let you know that uh, you are uh, at five minutes left from the Okay, end. so I have, to, I have to go fast. Okay, thanks a lot. So and this is uh, um, an example of uh, uh, how we can, uh, uh, we can acquire uh, in, uh, in quasi real time the acquisition. And this is a patient acquired in two uh, different days. Uh, and you can see here that the um, activity induced by the beam uh, during, the, during the treatment can be uh, acquired in quasi real time and compared in several, in several days. So I move on to the, next, uh, uh, to the next system, which is the dose profiler, uh, which is a, a, a tracker, a particle tracker that is composed by um, scintillating fibers, uh, orthogonal planes, eight scintillating fibers, orthogonal planes that are the role to track charged fragments that are produced uh, by the, the, the interaction of uh, in, in this case, the carbon ions beam fragment, fragmented in the, in the patient during the treatment. So this is really a, a beam on uh, trigger uh, treatment. So the two system can work independently, and the system is now the inside system is uh, now under an observation a clinical trial now, where we mainly do interfraction comparison in order to detect possible. Uh, variation in the anatomy of the patient uh, in a day-by-day -day, uh, treatment, uh, treatment course. Up to now, we monitored 20 patients, 10 uh, proton-treated uh, patients and then 10 carbon-treated patients. And then we have to stop, we had to stop for the pandemic situation. But we did a lot of analysis. And you can see here, for instance, uh, um, um, a patient that is uh, uh, that we monitored with the in PET system that uh, um, underwent uh, um, variation in the anatomy uh, during the treatment, and you can see here a um, planning CT and a uh, uh, control CT that has been acquired two weeks later, two weeks after the treatment, and you can see here variation in the cavity in the nasal cavity that is uh, partially filtered. And the system, uh, this is one of the uh, monitoring fraction, and this is the analysis that we perform on the uh, distribution of the reconstructed activity. Our system was able to, um, um, by means of the analysis of many profiles uh, along the beam direction, to, um, to see how and uh, where uh, this variation, this anatomical variation, where uh, located and then we uh, we we were able to um, uh, cross check the finding with the control CT. You can see here, for instance, an image obtained with the, our um, uh, dose profiler that is uh, um, obtained by this uh, analysis technique, where the fragments produced by the beam. Uh, during the interaction uh, uh, with the interaction of the beam with the patient and the production of uh, uh, charged fragments that are mainly protons that are able to uh, goes out from the, to go out from the patient, and with this uh, uh, analysis technique that is called point of closest approach technique that that allows you reconstruct. Uh, the track and then to um, calculate the emission point, we can see here the uh, distribution of uh, the, um, uh, the fragment that are emitted during the treatment. Um, we, did, we did a lot of uh, analysis that is uh, still ongoing uh, in order to, um, to uh, translate the information of uh, the nuclear uh, product reaction to something that can be manageable, manageable to, um, from the um, and usable by the 
radiation oncologist. And in, in this example, you can find an analysis that is called gamma analysis, where a, a reference image uh, is compared with the, uh, the image that we want to compare. And if there are um, discrepancies between the, uh, the reference and uh, the, the test image, the system is able to, to find it and then to show in a, uh, in a green red map where green is uh, everything is okay, red is something is, uh, is, uh, is happening. And this is uh, a patient where during the, the different days of the treatment shows a anatomical modification that can be uh, that, that, that has been revealed by the, the, the dose profiler and can be signaled by to the to the radiation oncologist. So I think that uh, my time is uh, is over. I have uh, I still have a lot of transparencies and other technique, but I have no time. But uh, you can uh, uh, in any case uh, uh, consult uh, the, the slide of my talk that is online. So uh, I move uh, to the uh, conclusion and uh, um, today we, uh, we, uh, we see many applications of detectors and also instrumentations in, uh, in particle therapies, especially dedicated to imaging, which is important in all the stages of, uh, of uh, the, the treatment pre, during, and after the, the treatment, and with particular focus on the, uh, on the uh, treatment phase. And uh, uh, many research is, uh, uh, is, is around this uh, interesting, important topic, like uh, um, MRI, for instance, MRI-guided uh, particle therapy, that I have no time, uh, that I have no time to show other uh, new uh, research techniques that, has, uh, that, that will be, uh, I think, uh, discussed in the, in the talk from Katia Parodi this afternoon. And so I uh, conclude thanking you uh, deeply for your, for your kind attention. And if you have uh, questions, uh, um, I'm here. And uh, let me conclude with the acknowledgement of my uh, colleagues and friends that help me in uh, um, enjoying this presentation and also my colleagues uh, in the inside the collaboration. Thank you very much for your attention. Thanks a lot, uh, Juzi. Thanks for your excellent talk. I really enjoyed it. And um, now I will leave uh, the, the floor to Christops for the Q&A session from the students. We have a first question in the chat from Coyote. Uh, can we say that the core of medical imaging is the detection system? Yeah, detection system is, uh, is fundamental. Uh, and um, I, I, I gave you a few hints of uh, the complexity of, uh, of the systems uh, that can be uh, and must be uh, realized. For instance, I'm a, a more expert on PET imaging uh, because it's, it's, my, it's my work. And uh, uh, I show you some example of what we can uh, we, we can uh, we can get with the uh, inbeam pet, but which is not the best that we can uh, we, we can get because uh, the systems are the hardware has, uh, uh, has limitations. For instance, our system is not uh, time of flight uh, grade pet, and time of flight grade pet. Uh, uh, could allow to solve a uh, lot of problems in the uh, image artifacts that we that we observe in our in our acquisitions. So this is only one example of uh, of what we uh, we can do to to improve our system. I had no time, for instance, to to talk about the proton computer tomography, which is an important uh, uh, technique that has not uh, reached the clinical maturity because of the complexity of, uh, uh, of the uh, detectors and, uh, and uh, instrumental setup. So we can, we can do many examples where detectors uh, are fundamental and, and maybe also impo important topic of uh, research. Okay. Uh... 
we have another question in the chat and then I'll give floor to Matthias. Uh, so the question in chat is from Julie. Maybe obvious, but I assume that the pet detectors you use for beam delivery confirmation cannot be used to create good resolution images of uh, positron emitting radio pharmaceuticals. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. This uh, this is true because uh, in beam pet, uh, because uh, what I said, uh, the, the, the image quality of uh, PET imaging in beam PET images is not a uh, high standard as uh, like commercial uh, top grade uh, um, top PET uh, uh, scanner. So it's uh, it, it, it could be it could be possible uh, if we implement that uh, if we implement uh, uh, for instance. Uh, um, of PET with more angular coverage of uh, the beam, uh, we can we can think about uh, uh, other geometry for uh, for to improve the coverage of uh, the field of view, but it's um, it requires investments on uh, on this field that are not uh, obvious. Okay, so our next question is from Matthias. Floor is yours. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I have two rather short questions. Uh, the first one would be, what would you think, or in your opinion, is the must-have modality for in-room imaging? And the second one would be, what was your modality of choice for range verification? For range verification and for imaging, in-room imaging. Exactly. Yeah, OK. Uh, I think that. Uh, um, Convincity is the most uh, is the most advanced and is the most uh, um, versatile, uh, as you say, uh, uh, where uh, it can be uh, more room, for instance, for um, adaptation, uh, therapy adaptation, uh, the, the one that I call the, the, the deals of the day, okay? And uh, uh, for uh, range monitoring, uh, I think that uh, uh, PET imaging uh, functioning in, in room with the possibility to acquire the uh, larger field of view with a faster and uh, uh, tough grade electronics that can also acquire the um, short living uh, uh, beta plus emitter can be uh, really uh, an upgrade uh, of the range monitoring. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Oh, yeah. So there was a uh, one question that we missed in the chat in between. So the question was, is is there a way or strategy on how to minimize or reduce radiation dose from a computed tomography scan? Yeah. Okay, radiation radiation dose in uh, in cities is uh, with the, the new system that optimizes the um, uh, the energy spectrum of the beam, uh, coupled with optimization algorithm is already uh, on the way to the minimal uh, dose for the for the maximum uh, information, and uh, so another way. Uh, that is, uh, it is important that it is, uh, uh, I think that it will be uh, the future. It is, uh, it is already you know, in some places a reality, is to include uh, in this uh, uh, optimized energy, energy spectrum uh, CT uh, modalities to include also single photon counter detectors that are now not, uh, not used, but simply uh, the, the doses, the, the information is, is integrated uh, uh, with uh, mainly a flat panel or um, integrating detector. So the revolution is to um, couple with optimized, uh, optimized uh, um, X-rays, uh, uh, X-ray generators with single photon uh, um, detectors that actually uh, are able to uh, acquire the 
single photon. So uh, in, in this way, getting rid of the noise also, being sensitive to the spectral components of, uh, uh, of the energy spectrum. And in this way, uh, provide not only an, an anatomical information, but also provide the parameters depending on the energy spectrum that can be used for uh, improve uh, uh, the, um, the treatment planning. I mean, uh, you can, with this system, you can uh, uh, extract the dependencies of uh, the attenuation coefficients from the energy in a direct way. And this information can be put in, uh, into the TPS for the calculation of uh, the stopping power of, uh, um, of the tissues. So I think this is the future. And also magnetic resonance, but it's, uh, I think it's uh, a way long to, to reach this uh, maturity. Thank you. Yes, we're a bit over time, but if Any other I, question, Christophs? Yeah, I, 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 I would wish myself just a small question. Okay, please uh, go. Actually, on the stuff that you sadly had to skip, uh, on the proton computed tomography. Uh, so would the gain with the use of proton computed tomography be that we would get a bit better data regarding the stopping power so we would have like lesser image associated range and Sorry, I, I didn't catch your question. Can you can you repeat because my um, audio is not it's not very good. Okay, so okay. So it was regarding the proton computed tomography yeah, that you should okay. have to skip. So the main gain from that, I suppose, would be that we would have better data regarding the stopping power. Yeah. yeah. So would how, how much we could reduce the sort of associated range uncertainties with imaging then? Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm not an expert of uh, um, proton computed tomography, but uh, I think that uh, uh, we can... Uh, uh, okay, the, the, the global uncertainty is of the order of 2-3%. Uh, and then you can uh, reduce of uh, one... Uh, uh, percent uh, the, the, the uncertainty, which is quite low, which is quite important. But I think that the, the important uh, way is that uh, you can uh, uh, extract the important parameter, which are the relative stopping powers values, uh, exactly from the beam that you are using to treat the patient. And we are not to, uh, to make a, a calibration starting from X-rays and, and, and then going back to, to protons and then, uh, uh, and then back and forth in, uh, in this way. So I think that there is a lot of uh, gain in this, uh, but unfortunately I, I didn't see any uh, clinical application of the proton computer tomography so far. I think it's very important, it's very difficult to uh, to think to integrate such uh, such systems is in uh, in the clinical workflow. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, we have just one question in the chat, and I guess then we should close because we are over time a little bit. It's from Dimitrios. Thank you very much for the presentation. I'd like to ask uh, you if it's better to have a multi-parametric imaging before treatment planning, like MRI PET, et cetera, or the online PET on the particle. No, 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 it's not, no, no, online PET is not, it's not, it's not absolutely sufficient to, uh, because multi-parametric imaging in pre-treatment is, is important in many, in many aspects. Uh, it, is, it is used to precisely calculate uh, uh, the, the dose to, to, to perform the, the treatment planning calculation and then also to uh, calculate the parameters that are used also for modeling of uh, the efficacy, efficacy, uh, efficacies of the treatment. So I, I think that we cannot uh, renounce to the standard uh, high performance uh, uh, imaging systems uh, to, to improve particle therapy quality. Okay, thank you. So I guess- Thanks a lot, Josie. That concludes our question and answer. Thank you, you too.
thanks to Christophs as well for this uh, nice Q&A session. And uh, Juzi, please stay with us uh, and the students uh, turn your cameras on because uh, we are going to take the last picture for this morning session. Okay. And so smile. Lots of people. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Hello. Uh, anyway, Josie, many, many thanks for a very nice talk. From Thank me you very well. much for the invitation.